Hi everyone. So, it's been a while since I've made a video, like, with, like, detailing more of a guide format. I also made a, a empty promise in my little, my Gladio Galoof Cheese video that I'd be talking about this, but anyway. So, what I'm going to talk about today is the 8 debuffs, which is the expected new quality of life change we're going to be receiving with the new story chapter which also features Eldnarch BT and Knowles LD. But, yeah, again, I'm not talking about the banners. I'm talking about, I'll, I'll talk about that in a different video. For now, I'm going to be talking about what's coming with them, which is the 8 debuff quality of life change for the game, which is subtle, but huge in terms of, like, changing how we're going to approach fights moving forward. So, let's get right to it. What does it mean to have the buff slots go from 6 to 8? This big! <laughs> what the fuck? So, first is... Remember when Ferris was praised for being a god tier call? Yeah, this is why. Basically, we get more flexibility on characters that just overload enemies with debuffs. So... Key example, Ferris. Since she can she has two opportunities to just apply like five debuffs straight up during a fight as a call unit. Next to her would be like Kaius who Okay, admittedly, the defense down is the main debuff you're looking for, unless you run like a max brave down team, which is going to be a lot more fun to pull off now. But other than that. It's more of the idea that you can mix and match more debuffs along with each other now. So, like I said, more flexibility. Next is, it retroactively approaches how you're going to be taking some fights now. So, I gave this a bit of thought, and the ones that came to my, like, the front of my noggin is, well, take the RCL Lufenia, or the Beatrix Lufenia. Both of these fights have, like, a feature where the boss just, like, overloads themselves with buffs. So, in particular, I'd, I'd like to go over Arcielos first, because there used to be an issue with people, like, uh, getting screwed over by the orb because they completely debuff lock the enemy out of having any chance to buff themselves to be dispelled. So what that means is, like, it's going to be a bit more... it's going to be a bit easier to not, like, screw yourself over in that fight. So for newer players, you're going to have a bit... Of, it's going to be a lot easier because, one, you're basically, you're, you've power crept yourself a lot from that fight already. And two, uh, yeah, like I said, you won't you won't lock yourself out with debuffs. Anyway, next is the Eldnarch Lost Chapter. So, for the rare few that actually chose to do a non-zero boss turn run with this, there will be moments where the beetle gets a full onslaught of frame buffs that have to be either dispelled or if you were using Eldnarch which is basically debuff lock him out of it. And since Eldnarch has no... Uh, since the 8 debuff changes is going to happen, Eldnarch is going to have be a bigger problem to pull that off. Now, what else am I thinking of? Uh, oh yeah, uh, next thing to talk about is the characters that thrive on, that thrive on debuffed enemies are going to have a field day with the, <laughs> with the 8 debuff changes. So, like I said, uh, Eldnarch is the poster boy of the debuff change quality of life, and as such, his kit actually features a increased brave damage per debuff on the enemy. I forget the percents, and I don't really care because I don't care for El Nacho. But, to prove that I have absurd double standards, I'm going to talk about Vincent, because the dude basically has the same damage mechanic as Eldnarch, but the main difference is I like him more. But to give myself an excuse, you want to know why? Well, because one, he doesn't have LD boards yet, which means that has a lot of potential to become better. And two, he has a chance to receive a burst. Okay, next character is Kefka. Uh, Kefka has a burst that allows him to deal more HP damage per debuff applied, so he also gets a similar effect on this on his LD boards later down the life line around two months from now. Uh, basically said he's going he's going to be almost dealing permanently capped HP damage because of that because of this 8 debuff change. Next would be Sarah. 
<laughs> Jeez. Sarah is the Dark Horse LB Board Rework of the Year on Global. Fight me. Also, it's going to be a lot easier to upkeep her debuff conditional on her LD, since you can tack on more debuff allies and calls to, you know, you know, keep it, keep the enemies debuffed. So you basically have almost near permanent access to her increased brave damage and increased HP damage to the party. And lastly, is more of a future one that I'm looking forward to is Laguna. Laguna actually has the I want to say I think I think he does have the highest like brave percent damage per debuff on. And since he was featured in both the original Dissidia's, uh, the original Dissidia game, and on NT, he is going to be receiving his LD and his eventual burst, which I really hope will just skyrocket his damage, whenever that may be. So next is, well, actually, last point I want to talk about is. How are you going to play with the new debuff changes? Okay, honestly, sky's the limit. I'm personally excited to see what everyone's got to offer, but since the, G the global community is a very creative outlet for making team comps. Uh, but personally, I I'm going to expect uh, Faris to see a lot more action now because it's a lot easier to like just activate her debuff conditionals. As and I am personally going to be using, of course, the Ferris mode. And actually, I'd like I'd actually like to try more of Gaius going forward, uh, because he does have a 60% defense down on him, which is very good since it's a unique frame debuff. And his other debuffs can kind of fall off, so you can kind of sort of time it. Uh, I'm uh, I'm getting too I'm getting too like technical on fight mechanics. Uh, I'll make this, uh, I promise I'll make this video short. But anyway, uh, as for characters, hmm. Yeah, like I said, Vincent, I'm, I'm definitely gonna give Vincent a go again once the 8 debuffs come in. But, I don't know, he never really had issues capping on damage. And with the 8 debuffs now in play, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a problem now either. And I think that's pretty much it. It's a very short video. I just wanted to, like, uh, point out the details that one RCL uh, the some Lufenias might be a bit more dif might be different now on how you approach them and of course we have a lot of character flexible we have a lot of like new ways to like team build create uh, compositions and art and call call setups now so yeah it's like I said subtle but a lot of a lot of like a lot of like significant changes can happen due to that subtlety. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. So, who do you plan to experiment with these new changes? Uh, let me let me know down below. Uh, leave a leave a comment or something. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So like, comment, subscribe, eh, the usuals. And lastly, thanks for watching. Bye bye.